Oh, it's on camera. No, I actually do have a question. I'm just using this to make sure that. Your arm is getting tired. This is what we've got in handy. Mr. Koenig's uh, work as Oro on the Canadian series Star Lost. And I have two questions for him related to that. One of which, uh, how did he enjoy playing a villain? And number two, was working with all Canadian talent as problematic as working with William Shatner? <laughs> <laughs> Which is about my relationship with Mr. Shatner, which we can get to. Um, in fact, I have a little bit of an bonus to give everybody. But let me tell you, I really didn't work. I really, I loved working on the show, uh, Star Wars. The show was not a good show. <laughs> <laughs> I brought in a bunch of uh, American soap opera directors who sort of directed it that way. Also, the money wasn't there to shoot. It. So it, had a, it was very slow paced, and it, it, I don't think it had the sense of urgency, tension, you know, that it would have bounded, you know, it had made a tighter show, and would have kept the audience's attention. I had a ball. I loved, I loved being in Toronto. I loved not having the pressure of the, of the studio. I, I gave some of the most relaxed performances playing Oro, um, but you know, the Canadian actors had a very tough, tough schedule. Uh, at that, I don't know what it's like now, but there was no overtime pay for, for, for the, the actors' union up here in, in Canada. So they could work them 18, 19 hours a day and not have to worry about overtime. And uh, here delay, two Canadian actors, I can't remember their names, I'm sorry. Um, they were really getting punchy from working so long. And uh, this is, I, I, I am actually, believe it or not, going to address the question <laughs> about getting along with everybody. So we got along terrifically until this one thing happened. In my second episode, I had come in, they had been working, as I say, 18, 19 hours a day. And I had this gold May outfit thing. Oro, go with the bay. You know, somehow it seemed to make sense. <laughs> but when I walked, you know, it squeaked. <laughs> <laughs> you could hear me coming, you know, 30 feet away. And these poor guys were so tired and so giddy that when I got off the set, we got off the ship, and I said, Oro's back, or whatever I said. And I went, Oro's back. <laughs> <laughs> they started to laugh. <laughs> Cut! Okay, everybody composed themselves. Let's do it again. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I said, I'm Oro, I'm back. Squeaks! They <laughs> 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 couldn't contain themselves. It was one of those. Infectious laughs, just you know, yeah. when you were 11 years old and you can't stop. At least I had it when I was 11 years old. In fact, they took me to the nurse's office when I had it. <laughs> and it got worse and worse. It didn't get better, it got worse and worse and worse. And finally I said, okay, uh, when you can act like professionals, I'll return you. And I walked off the set. It did not endear me to anybody. Um, and I walked away and I said, sat down in the stairwell, and the director came up to me and apologized and said, you know, I think they're ready to work now. Well, I had, in fact, embarrassed them. And uh, it, it got the job done, but it didn't, it didn't create goodwill. And Keir, who I really liked, whose background was, whose political background was very similar to mine. Um, both our parents had been members of the Communist Party, so we had a lot to talk about. But that was the end of our relationship. He, uh, I mean, he was the lead in the show, and he had been, you know, he had been dressed down by a, a guest actor, and that was difficult to accept. So we, uh, the, rest of the, the rest of the shoot was not nearly as pleasant as uh, the first one had been. The happy ending is that I, I, you know, I've run into him subsequently, and, and he was quite congenial, and I think it, if, if, in fact, he even remembers what happened, he certainly 
comported himself in a much sure, friendlier manner. I think I answered the question. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chatter. You <laughs> mean <laughs> <The> Mr. Chatter? <laughs> well, he has a show called Raw Nerd among the, the 20 or 30 different shows that he has on the internet. <laughs> you know, sit down opposite him and uh, you talk about very personal things. And the whole idea is, you know, is to, I guess, get the, uh, the guest to cry. <laughs> uh, I haven't watched the show, but uh, I told him there were certain there were certain areas that were off limits, and he respected that. And uh, but we sat down and we we had we talked for well over an hour. Although it's only it's only 22 minutes show, so it'll be edited. Um, but it, what it really came down to, uh, you know, we started off with a wide variety of subjects, but what it ultimately came down to was uh, the problems that we all had on the set with him, you know, which he could never understand. He just <laughs> couldn't get it. And, uh, I, and on one point, he was uh, very responsive and apologized profusely. And on the other point, he absolutely denied that anything ever happened. I don't want to go into the whole thing, but the, what, he, what he agreed with was that although he was the captain of the crew, he never was captain of the cast. He was never our leader. We could never go to him. Um, he, it wasn't that he was, you know, one of these very cold people. It's just that he made no effort, you know, to be friends. And I was, and I told him on the air, I said, uh, when we did this thing, I said, I don't think he remembered my name when we came back to do the first Star Trek movie. And he just sort of looked at me like, you know, maybe that's so, I don't know. Uh, it was very self, I thought you were very self-involved. You know, I, I understand that you had a great sense of responsibility. After all, the, the show was, the, the fact that we were making these, these movies was predicated on your involvement. Uh, you, you know, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't get the financing. You and Leonard, we wouldn't get the financing. So you have a heavy responsibility. But it, it, it did certain things to the way you, dealt with us that made it untenable um, for us to, uh, to approach him. And, uh, and he agreed that he was not friendly, and that he was, you know, he, he, he and Leonard and DeForest were a triumvirate, and they, and they really hung out only by themselves. Um, you know, if, 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 it, if he had, if he had um, argued that point, I probably would have, so I didn't want to really hit him below the belt, but I would have said, you know, as opposed to Patrick Stewart, who the other cast members of Next Generation loved. And he was always there for them. And he went to the front office when, um, when there was a problem. He had, you know, he, that was his moral, ethical responsibility. That's the way he felt. I didn't say any of that, because I didn't need to, because he apologized. What he denied was that he, he had that he had changed stuff right on the set we were shooting. He changed setups, you know, the, the angles that we were going to shoot at, so that if it was if it was for, you know for a brief moment focusing on one of the supporting actors, it was suddenly changed to focus on on Bill. And it became it became kind of a gag, you know. Um, Nick Meyer, who directed two of our films, and, th and this is where it happened mostly, would say, "Okay." Um, we're gonna, this is the shot where the torpedo comes at the ship, at the, at the, at the Enterprise, and Chekhov says, incoming, so what we want is the dolly, the camera right in on Chekhov's face, right? Right, okay, <coughs> set up the lights. And I turned to the electrician and said, guys, this is the time for you to take a cigarette break. <laughs> and he said, what are you talking about? He said, this shot's never gonna be made. They're never going to shoot this. He says, the director just said. And I turned and looked, and almost on cue, I'd see Bill going, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what we're going to do is, instead of there, we're going to take the dolly and we're going to come in on, on Kirk. Now, you say to yourself, 
iron veins, a small point. But all we had were these small points, <laughs> these, these little moments. So that we, we cherished them, you know, it was, it was very important to us. It sounds petty to an outsider, but if you're an actor, it's, it's important. Um, particularly since, you know, psychologically, we go to a conventions, everybody loves us, there's all this approbation, there's all this feeling of, you know, of warmth and, and welcome and reinforcement, and you want to prove yourself, you want to prove that it's worth, that, you know, that, that we merit these, you know, this, this kind of reaction. So when a moment like this comes along, you say, okay, I'm giving back, you know, to the fans something, you know, uh, uh, giving back a little bit of, of, of all their, of all their, you know, support. And then it's gone. So on a, on a lot of levels, on the level simply of being an actor and, you know, wanting to have moments, I mean, on the level of <coughs> wanting to justify, you know, your, your, place and, 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 and the recognition that you're receiving, um, these moments become important. So, and Bill never even know he was doing it, or so he says. Um, and, I, you know, and what happens is when we see that happen, we sort of look at each other sideways and, and kind of give a wry smile because it was happening again, you know, and again and again and again. So he, he couldn't remember anything. 